Game over. The screen that told you you couldn't go any further. The game was over. That's that. Depending on what type of game you're talking about, you had to start from a save or even from the beginning again. It was the game's way of saying, you messed up. And we just don't see it that much anymore. Triple A gaming has a tendency to allow you to make any mistake that you can possibly imagine and be fine. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks we asked the question, why don't games let us make mistakes anymore? Now I want to start off saying something so that we don't get confused as to what we're talking about here. Video games are enjoyed by more people, they're more successful as a medium than they ever have been, and accessibility features are not what we're talking about here. Instead, let's talk about AAA games and the affirmation that you are in fact a good gamer. Triple A games occupy the same space in video gaming that any Michael Bay film would in the movie industry. That's not to say the quality is the same, but Triple A is essentially the equivalent of our blockbusters. There are good blockbusters and there are bad blockbusters, but the main reason they're made is to give you some entertainment. A Triple A game isn't necessarily a hardcore game. But how did it get like that? Well, in order to trace this, we have to talk about consumerism. The idea that the customer is always right, and whether or not it is true, and whether or not the company actually truly caters to the actual overarching good for the consumer isn't as relevant as making the game flatter the consumer. Now the definition of flattery is excessive and insincere praise, especially that given to further one's own interests. The key word there is insincere. So how does this tie back into the difficulty of games? Well, the actual true difficulty of a game isn't really actually tied up into this. It's more how the game punishes you for not succeeding within a difficult situation as defined by the game. And right now, in a world of consumer validation, the punishment for difficulty is near non-existent. In most recent AAA games, even incredibly good ones, games with good narratives, good interactive stories, good gameplay mechanics, if there aren't consequences, then the actual difficulty isn't very satisfying to overcome because you'll eventually do it anyway. Now that's not to say a more narrative-driven experience needs to be permadeath-oriented in order to be good. If the narrative is the focus of the game, then obviously the mechanics matter a little bit less, but not necessarily a lot. It is, however, more important a game that relies heavily on mechanics to be considered good doesn't just hold your hand the whole way. And this isn't me going, oh, games all hold your hands. It's a button appearing over everything that you can actually do something with. An arrow pointing you in the right direction at all times. But that's not to say there aren't people who would at least prefer the option to have that in the game. And ultimately, I think that's really the thing that we need to start thinking about is, why don't we even have the option? The point is immersion, but for the more hardcore among us, immersion certainly means consequences as much as it means anything else in the game. I don't fault people for save scrumming, that's something that people who have jobs or kids or stuff like that might need to do in order to get through a game they like. I don't care. There's just certain games I would really like to be able to die in, you know? Now I'm gonna go ahead and say I love Final Fantasy XV. I think it is the best Final Fantasy game in a long time, and I mean a long time. But there was no such thing as an incident in that game where you could do anything wrong. There was no boss fight that I needed to do more than once. There was no cave or dungeon I got stuck in. I never had to go sell off a bunch of items because I accidentally did something stupid with my inventory. And let's be clear, there isn't a Final Fantasy experience I've had up until this point where I haven't at some point done something stupid with my inventory. For me it's part of the experience and in a way it's even part of getting to know the systems in place to play the game. And I understand very much so that it does require a little bit more work to create multiple difficulty levels, multiple versions of the game, but wouldn't it be relatively easy to just say, all right, in this mode, there's consequences for dying. And I'm not saying that the game has to be the most punishing thing in the world. Dark Souls is difficult and punishing, but honestly, I feel like it's really fair too. It doesn't rely on superficial things to up the difficulty level. It just, you know, makes it so that there's consequences for not doing things right. And like I said, I think the real solution is making things options, making it so that there is a mode for people who want to play it with more consequences and a mode for people who don't. 
And I also think there should be accessibility features so that people who don't necessarily have the ability to play the game in a hardcore capacity can still enjoy it. And truthfully, these aren't things that you'd need to go through the entire game and make changes to things. Make the mode with consequences, maybe give the enemies 120% of their normal HP so that they take a little bit more punishment and the consequences of losing are more apparent. I mean, this is a medium that can change for every single person, and not every single person wants a guided tour through the game world. Some of us like to go off the beaten path, and some don't, and that's fine. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with playing a game the way that I'm criticizing games forcing you to play at the moment. My criticism is that we're all forced to play games like this. Every mode is easy mode, at least in AAA games. Indie games are definitely giving us some different experiences, and I really have to give them props. And I also have to give props to games like Hellblade, Senua Sacrifice, and Nier Automata for giving the kind of options I'm talking about. These games are fun regardless of how you play them, but you're allowed to change how you play them, and it actually has some sort of significant difference depending on what option you choose. One of those games isn't actually an indie game, though, so it's possible in AAA. Just seems like AAA doesn't care so much about giving everybody the experience they want and just wants to create a spectacle that everybody will spend money on. Oh well, someday it'll change, right? It's not like these problems are systemic or anything. Oh wait, they are. What are some difficult games that you like, or games that give you the option that actually has some sort of significant effect on the gameplay? Leave a comment, let's discuss. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, and if you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.